Well, it's the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, where here is wisdom, okay? And by the way, not only wisdom, but also understanding and orma. Orma is sometimes translated prudence. It's probably not the best way to look at it. But especially chokhmot, the feminine, is wisdom, is there with God from the beginning. And he or she is there when God laid the foundations of the world, when he brought out the mountains, there's wisdom. Well, you read Proverbs, and we understand there's not another person. We understand that wisdom is being personified, but right. it's really a characteristic of God. Another good way to see this, I, I challenge people to simply open up and read Psalm 33, verse 6, and tell me if you think there is a second person back there with yod Yahweh, God Almighty, the Lord, with him creating. What does Psalm 33, 6 says? By the word of the Lord, okay, the devar, the devar yod When I say yod you don't understand what that means. It's Yahweh's personal name, okay? My Trinitarian friends, they really have a hard time figuring out who Yahweh is. If it's God the Father, God the Son, all of the Trinity together, it's, it's embarrassing, quite honestly. But because it's a personal name, we read in the, in the Hebrew Scriptures, this is the personal name of God. By the word of Yahweh, Psalm 33, 6, by the word of Yahweh, the heavens were made, and by the spirit of his mouth, their hosts were set up, all of their hosts. Okay? Now, you read Psalm 33, 6, you don't see another person back there. Why not? There's the word. The word is there with God. Why don't we see another person? We know why not, because he's not there. This is the expression of the one God. Turn with me quickly, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. We'll go right back to the beginning now. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Now, the predominant usage of the word Elohim is for the one true God. Elohim, for the one true God, appears 2,346 times in the Old Testament. Okay? Read it with me from the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the Hebrew, in the beginning, God created his better shith bara Elohim. Right? Now... We must understand this, that in all of the 2,346 times that the Hebrew word Elohim is used for the one true God, it is always governed by singular pronouns, verbs and adjectives. Over 2,000 times. Now there's a lot of evidence there now. What is God trying to describe to us? He, I am a single person God. How do we know this? First example, in the beginning God created, Bereshith bara is the Hebrew word for created or create. And that is a singular verb. Bereshith means in the beginning. Bara means created, Elohim means God. Bara is the singular verb that is governing the plural noun Elohim. Therefore, it clearly indicates that God is a single person. Because it's only one person, one single entity that is creating. And it's true. The Bible describes that throughout, you know, in other passages, in other books, especially in Isaiah, when God says, I alone created the earth. I alone fashioned it. The singular verb clearly indicates. Okay. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And I've specifically chose this verse. A verse that is highly controversial, yet very clearly explained. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Now, it says, are we all there? It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image and in the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. And again, the words there in the Hebrew of verse 26, then God said in the Hebrew, it is 
Waoma Elohim. Then God said, Waoma Elohim. Okay? Now, people want to direct us to this verse and say, well, here we go. We have the plural pronoun us. Therefore, God is a plurality of persons. What they fail to understand is that the verse that opens it up, then God said, is a, pl- is a singular verb. <laughs> Then God said, singular verb. In other words, Moses is trying to describe to us that it is a one person God that is beginning to make a formal announcement. Waoma Elohim said is a singular verb governing the Hebrew word Elohim. So, the speaker is clearly one person, God. So this one person God who is speaking, because if it were clearly a plurality of persons speaking, you should say, and they said. But it doesn't say that. It says, God said with a singular verb. If he, if Moses wanted to describe to us a plurality of Elohim, he would use a plural verb. But he uses a singular verb. So this singular person God Then says, let us make man. Can you see the us? It's a plural pronoun. The word make is a plural verb. Now people just, you know, put their hands in the air and say, well, there you go. See, a plural plural pronoun and a plural verb, us and make, well, that clearly indicates that God is a plurality of persons, but we've ignored the beginning. Because grammatically... And linguistically, in a sentence, you begin from the beginning. You don't just start from the middle of a sentence. Clearly, here, Moses starts by identifying the speaker. And this speaker clearly is a single person. Now, this single person does speak uh, in the plural sense. Absolutely. But we need to dig a little bit deeper into the grammar. And like I was sharing Bible study Tuesday night, what did we understand? The plural, the plural pronoun us and the plural verb us are what, uh, grammatically speaking, they are cohortative in meaning. Okay? In other words, what it means that God is clearly addressing himself in the first person us and others who were with him. Not others who were a part of him, others who were outside of him and who were with him in his presence, which... We're not going to do this right now, but if you follow on with the other us verses in the Bible, and there's really only another four verses, Genesis 3.22, Genesis 11.7, Isaiah 6, say, clearly it is he's speaking in regards to his angelic host. So you see that God is not speaking just to himself and to others who are, you know, a part of him. He is clearly speaking to himself as a singular person and others who were with him in his courts, the angels. Okay? So you see, even this very verse that is so hotly disputed can clearly teach you that God is a single person. By the singular verb, God said, describing the speaker. Okay. Um, Quickly turn with me to Isaiah 45. Now, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 18. If people want to dispute that, you know, God was speaking as a plurality of persons in Genesis 1.26 and that as the doctrine of the Trinity teaches us that God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit were all co-creating the heavens and the earth, then this verse, I think, should pretty much stop that. In Isaiah 45, verse 18... Isaiah 45, 18 says, For thus says the Lord who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, and who did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited. Read it now. The Lord, in other words, Yahweh who created the heavens, who is God and who formed the earth. Now, read, listen carefully. The, he, the words in the Hebrew, who is God and who formed the earth, in the Hebrew it says this, Elohim Yose Ha'ares, and the word formed is a singular verb. The word 
formed is a singular verb governing the Hebrew word Elohim. So who was actually forming the earth? It was the single person God. For, for it, if, it were, if, God were co, if God was a co-creator, if the Father was a co-creator with God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, it would not use the singular verb for formed. It would use the plural, the plural verb, for, uh, the plural verb formed. Okay? It would write it in some other way. But he, hebraically, grammatically, Isaiah uses the singular verb form to describe who this one person God is. Only one God created the heavens and the earth. And only one creator was responsible for what you see today. 